did change lives. It encouraged people to go into space and become astronauts because they saw people like Nichelle Nichols on the screen and thought, oh, I can do that too. So Hi, Aaron. It is such a joy to speak with you. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. I really. Oh, gosh. It. Absolutely. Yeah. No worries at all. Um, it, This is a pleasure to speak with you. Obviously, I mean, I I grew up a fan of the Star Trek universe. Uh, I really, you know, across the board. Um, I still think Kirk is my favorite. I'm not going to lie. It's all right. It's all good. <laughs> I don't know if people agree with me anymore or not, but no, it's so much fun to chat with you. And and I certainly appreciate it. Uh, Prodigy is an exciting project. It's an exciting series. Um, how did you come to be a part of it? What is it that excites you about Star Trek? Yeah, I didn't come into Star Trek until a little later in life. I didn't really grow up in a sci-fi household. I was sort of the little black sheep who was running off to watch Star Wars and all of that fun stuff. But um uh, when I was in college, I was a physics major, and there's a lot of Star Trek fans who are physics majors. And so I started getting introduced to the next generation, loved it, started watching the original series, loved it, had a crush on Spock, watched all of them. It was fantastic. <laughs> I uh, then went on to graduate school. Well, first, uh, the Kelvin film came out the night that I graduated in 2009. And and that was my introduction to Trek fandom, where I was like, oh, these are my people. I get this. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I got into Voyager, Deep Space Nine. Janeway became a huge mentor to me. She's my captain. I will ride or die for Captain Janeway. And so um, in terms of how I kind of got into the franchise itself, it was through the fan side. I left academia, but I missed teaching. And so I started going to conventions and giving talks on the science behind science fiction. And that's kind of how I got on CBS's radar. So I was brought in for season three of Star Trek Discovery uh, was my first role. And then they were like, oh, we've got all these other shows in production. It would be good to have one person who kind of manages not just the science, but the Star Trek technology. And that's kind of how my role came about. Well, okay, let's talk about that a little bit, because I know, like, I, I remember growing up the conversation of wars versus Trek, if you will. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when we think about Star Trek, we think about, you know, space battles and aliens and all of these incredible things. But there is a lot of thought that is put into and in the science of of the universe that they travel in. Why is it that that wars or not wars? I'm sorry. Whoa. Why is it that Trek um, is able to give us these incredible stories, incredible, uh, memorable characters and stories, but still keep it somewhat grounded? Yeah, I think, you know, that was a legacy that kind of was built into it from the beginning. Uh, Gene Roddenberry, you know, had a decent technical background. Certainly his network had, you know, a lot of folks who worked in the aerospace industry. And so a lot of that technology was all kind of baked in from the beginning. And it's something that the franchise takes seriously. You know, they had science advisors all through the 90s into the 2000s. And, you know, I was just honored to be a, a small part of that. But I think what's so cool about Star Trek and that legacy of science is that now we're going on nearly 60 years of this franchise that we're seeing multiple generations grow up with it and decide that they want to become engineers or doctors or scientists because of it. And so that's why I think the franchise takes that science backbone so seriously. It really is incredible, the relationship of this and the scientific community. Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you hear about the number of people, not just because they're fans, but how seriously they take the product, the 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 franchise as well. It it really is remarkable. Um, so what is it about? Like, what what is your role uh, in the star? I know certainly, you know, you're involved in in Prodigy, but as a science advisor to to Paramount, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, day to day, it's a lot of reading scripts. You know, I get the scripts as they're written and I am able to make sure just the dialogue, my my main job is make sure we don't say anything wrong. That's the most important thing that we say nothing that contradicts normal science. Um, but then for each show, it's very different. I would say Star Trek Discovery really had a heart 
core about being scientists and exploring and and having problems that were scientifically grounded. And then also, it's not just getting those facts, but for discovery, it was like, well, how would a scientist approach this? Like how, as a scientist, what data would you need? How would you rule out things? So that's where that advising came in. Then you go to something like Prodigy. Again, I'm making sure we're not saying anything wrong. We're baking in some science to it. But the conversation is like, well, how can we connect with children to inspire them to become scientists and understand the science that's in the show? And so that's where it's like each show kind of has its own little nuance that uh, I approach each one very differently and have a different relationship with all of them for. So so in your mind, then, how does that how does like you said, how does that work with Prodigy mm -hmm. uh, specifically focus on Prodigy itself? You know, if each one has its own unique voice. What is it about Prodigy that sets it apart? Yeah, I think, you know, the character of Rock Talk was sort of the first item on the agenda when I came into the writer's room that they had a young girl who wanted to become a scientist. And how were we going to shape that character? And how would we, if little Erin was watching Prodigy, what would she connect to with Rock Talk? That was what they wanted. And so we baked a lot of my own journey into becoming a scientist into that character. But what I really love about it is that we tend to, as a society, kind of paint a broad brush when we say, like, get kids into STEM, right? Well, how are you going to get them into STEM? And what kind of science would they want to get into? And that's where I think Prodigy did a great job of Rock Talk being like, oh, I like science but I don't know what kind yet. And she keeps mm. trying different sciences and figuring out what's working and what's not. And until she finds one that she really connects with. And so I really like that nuance of them connecting with kids on a more real level about what that looks like to become a scientist. It, it really is. It really is beautiful. And, and like I said, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool way to, uh, to speak to another generation um, yeah. in a special way um you know what and speaking of speaking of this one of the things that has always amazed me about star trek is its inclusive nature so regardless of age gender uh you know race whatever it seems to be able to transcend that in ways that other shows or franchises it's not that they can't but they doesn't seem to be it doesn't seem to feel as inclusive i was wondering in your mind what is it about star trek that opens that door yeah, again, I think it goes back to the origins of it. You know, they they did things on screen that had never been seen before and trying to put, you know, the 1960s is such a long time ago that it's sometimes hard for us to realize that having a Asian man and a Black woman and a Russian on the bridge working together was a huge deal. And similarly i think as we go through the generations and we get up to things like star trek discovery and you know having michael burnham as a black woman be the captain and to have a gay couple on there and to have a trans and non-binary characters in the show i think star trek doesn't shy away from that because they know that star trek was the one that was always challenging it mm. and so if it upsets people and if it turns them off it's like no, 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 this this has always been what Star Trek is. And it's important for us to show that because it did change lives. It encouraged people to go into space and become astronauts because they saw people like Nichelle Nichols on the screen and thought, oh, I can do that too. So I think that that it's another thing that Star Trek just takes that responsibility really seriously. You know, it's, it's amazing because like you said, so much time has passed. But you, when you think about it in the 1960s, I think that, you know, uh, Nichelle Nichols and, and Shatner, the first interracial kiss, even, you know, something like that, where we would say, OK, but in yeah. 1965, like this is this is a major deal in the 80s. There's conversations about LGBTQ happening in, in Nick's generation. It continues to be on the crest of furthering conversations in ways that I think other shows are unable to do in, in a certain way. It's pretty remarkable. Yeah, for sure. They don't shy away from it, I think, is the important thing. They they know that their fans have to be in on it. <laughs> like that's that's part of what it is to be a Star Trek fan. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it is pretty is pretty amazing. And and in the case with Prodigy, like I said, you're reaching a new a next generation. You're reading a new um 
with the animated series and and moving forward with that. I think it, I, there's a broad range of conversations at, at age appropriate levels all across the board, trying to be inclusive and empowering in, in a number of ways. It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, but, I love I have a favorite episode of season one of Prodigy where they um, they meet a nefarious scientist and someone who is being unethical. And it's a really hard like that's a good conversation for kids to have is to see the ethics of science and that seems like such a big topic but with something like star trek it's like no that's let's do it let's have that conversation uh, absolutely absolutely uh is there somewhere somewhere you'd like to see the show boldly go in this season or beyond or that that it hasn't been yet Oh, gosh. I mean, we're touching so many great points in in the Star Trek lore and canon. For me, what season two of Prodigy fulfilled was as a Voyager fan, it felt really like a spiritual sequel to Voyager of seeing all of our favorite characters back and um, it, without overshadowing the kids, you know, that they're still able to go on their adventures. And I'm really excited for Starfleet Academy. You know, I love the Discovery era that far in the future for what was already the future and to see what it looks like to rebuild the Federation and to try to explore that era a little bit more, which we're going to get with Starfleet Academy. And so I'm very excited for that one as well. Oh, I love that. I appreciate that. I, I know, uh, Aaron, I know we're starting to run out of time, but I'm just curious what you hope people take away from Star Trek Prodigy and, and the whole franchise. Well, I think Star Trek Prodigy is a great entry point for anyone of all ages to get into Star Trek. I think if I have so many friends who are like, look, I know I would be a Star Trek fan, but I do not know where to start. And I think Prodigy is a great entry point for that. Um, I hope it inspires kids. I hope it, you know leads to generations of scientists coming up uh, i hope people check it out and i'm just incredibly proud of uh prodigy as a show so yeah thank you thank you i really appreciate the time to chat with you uh and it certainly is an exciting it's an exciting show and we absolutely love it it's so much fun uh thank you, uh, thank so, you much. so much for the time i appreciate it yeah absolutely i really appreciate it fellow star trek fan no shame in kirk <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> I love it. Or, or Janeway. I loved her. I loved Voyager 2. It's fantastic. It's so much fun. She's, um, she's my man. I will follow her to the ends of the earth. <laughs> have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank See you. Thank you so much. Oh, 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 oh,